Georgina Ann, welcome to Pasadena, California, home of Caltech, or California Institute of Technology. Also, the place where the dudes from the Big Bang Theory were. I didn't know that, but we're not here to deal with science fiction. Mm -mm. Only science fact. Fact. This way, fact. <laughs> Boasting 39 Nobel Prize winners, some of the most important scientific discoveries of our time have been made here, including the Richter scale, space-time interactions, and the theory of elementary particles. Today, Caltech are giving us exclusive access to their brand spanking new Center for Autonomous Systems and Technology, or CAST, as they like to call it. In here, super clever stuff is being developed to help humanity triumph over adversity. And first up, we're meeting Professor Meister and his assistant Yang, who've developed an augmented reality system to help blind people see by listening. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing in augmented reality. Imagine you can't see, but you can hear well. Now imagine someone put you in a world where not only people, but also objects have voices. Windows and doors and uh, cars and chairs and tables can talk to you. They've created the Cognitive Augmented Reality Assistant, or CARA for short, and it works with Microsoft's mixed reality headset, the HoloLens. Hi, Yang. So I recognize that, HoloLens. Yes. How have you modified it? So essentially, I developed the software so that it can translate the visual thing into sound to help blind people to navigate and explore. Assisted by the sensing capabilities of the HoloLens, Kara uses a computer vision algorithm to scan its environment and identify physical objects that have been tagged. I'd love to have a go. Yang has prepared a course for me to navigate. OK, blindfold. My task is a simple one. Make my way through it, find a chair and sit down. All you have to do is pretty much just follow the virtual guide. OK, so put this on. Let me put the HoloLens on you. OK, great. Whenever you're ready, just click on the clicker. Navigation started. OK. Follow me. OK, so automatically it's follow saying me. follow me this way. Follow me. So can you oh, that's hear, amazing. Kara uses a combination of instructions follow and me. white noise through the headset surround follow sound system, which lets you know exactly follow where me. objects are. As soon as follow I come me. close to that, in my left ear, I get some white noise to show that, that an object's getting closer. Wow. Now, whilst you guys at home can see the algorithm in action, I follow can't. Me. I'm totally blind. Right turn ahead. Follow me. Okay, now it's saying Follow that I need me. to turn right in my right ear. And soon enough, my mission is accomplished. Steal it! <laughs> it's the chair! <laughs> the applications for this technology are potentially life changing for the visually impaired. Next, we're off to meet Rachel Geller, who's making big strides in the world of mechanical humanoid limbs. Rachel, that's a very impressive leg. Tell us a little bit about it. Yes, yeah, so this is called a powered prosthesis, and it's for an amputee that has an amputation above the knee. It's called the Ampro 3, and it's the first above the knee powered prosthetic that can mimic exactly how a human walks. Um, it's powered, so other commercially available devices are more passive. They'll freely swing to take a step, but that takes a lot more energy for the amputee. But this one being powered with a battery, then the amputee doesn't have to expend as much energy in walking. It will walk more like a human. The knee and ankle joints move in sync with each other, and the battery power gives the leg at least three hours continuous walking life. Here's the knee joint, and it's powered by this motor. And then this motor powers the ankle joint, which moves the actual ankle joint through this linkage. And so you can see that the ankle moves like yeah. here. The ankle joint incorporates additional flexibility, which allows it to mimic the gait of the other leg. This is huge news for amputees. This is prosthetics with a bit of swagger. Mm -hmm. get the computer it's unique swag. Oh, oh. kicking. So it's ready to go. <laughs> oh, wow, look at yeah. that. So you can see that when I put all my weight on it, that's when it takes a step. Yeah. yeah. And then when I just stand, it just supports my weight. It's impressive. Our final stop was with cast director and Caltech professor Mortiza Gari. Obviously, you brought some British weather here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. He's going to show us his autonomous flying ambulance. 
So this is a working prototype. That's right. A one-fifth scale model, the production version will be the size of a small car and reach speeds of up to 75 miles per hour. It's fitted with an autopilot system, which means there will never be a pilot on board. Paramedics will ride in it though, and the autopilot system will transport injured people to hospital, while the onboard equipment will monitor patients' vital signs. The props that you've got at the back here, I notice a pivot. As you can see, this is a very hybrid uh, design. Mm -hmm. That means it has you know, fixed wings yeah. and also has uh, rotors. So during the lift off, you know, yes. they're going to provide you no know, lift. Yep. And as we go to transition to cruise, they're going to turn around nice. to become propulsive. And the reason for the swing wing and drone combination? Well, the wings provide more lift, which conserves battery power and extends the flying range. To find out more, we've come to the Drone Arena, which houses a very special wind machine called the Lucas Adaptive Wind Tunnel. Hi, guys. So, first of all, what, what is this? What you're looking at is a uh, fan array wind tunnel. It's a uh, giant wall of fans. In fact, there's 1,296 individually controllable fans here. How extreme can it go? At scale, we're able to generate wind speeds upwards of 20 meters per second. Wind speeds of this magnitude are generally felt during tropical cyclones. Obviously, we wanted to experience the fierce power of these fans for ourselves. Okay. Windy then. Obviously, a battery-powered ambulance drone is much more cost-effective than a chopper, and you don't need a landing pad wherever you're going. Let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. Satan. We have lifted. That's it. Yeah, yeah, see, it looks it's like a flying beetle. Isn't that? Yeah. Wow. Wings, Wings deployed. Wings being initiated. <laughs> All right, so you can see how the wind behaves around the craft. That's amazing. Brilliant. All right. I'd say that was a success. So how long do you think it will be before we start seeing these on the news? Uh, five years, perhaps? Five years. Okay, okay. that's quite that's good. good. Yeah. Yes, you heard that right. In just five years, fully automated ambulances could be flying around our skies. Buzzing.